take a walk with me. Stretch out this time and savor the moment. It's time for a red mage, blue mage, extra turn, baby. Oh, yeah. All right. Welcome. A long hiatus. A little bit. For red mage, blue mage, extra turns. Because we had some extra thoughts, and I talked to you, Seth, and I said, seems like we have some stuff to say about Mm -hmm. this set. Phyrexia All Will Be One, which is now wrapping up, and we're moving on to other things. Um... But we played a fair amount of it. Yeah. You and I played a fair amount of it together. Um, which, does the f- how, how much have we drafted you and I together in the last few formats? A handful of times? I think we did it with Streets yeah. once or twice, maybe? Yeah, maybe once or twice there. Something like that? Yeah. We've done something like eight drafts together. Something like that. In this. Yeah. And then a bunch more on our own. Mm-hmm. And Phyrexia all will be one. And speaking for the both of us, I'd say we'd give this set two thumbs down. I would say so. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you've been uh texting and messaging me <laughs> with your <laughs> yes. well, it's it's always such a roller coaster. It is. You send me snaps of like, here's my deck list. Yeah. And so frequently I look at it and I'm like We've got a winner on yeah, our hands. This is, boys. This is baller. Like, and then at the great. end of it it's back to formula. Mm-hmm. You know? Every time, every time it was a well one three or well oh three and just rough. So there, there's a lot to talk about yeah. there. So um, we were getting ready to discuss, and I was kind of envisioning this as just us going to therapy and ranting about how much we didn't <laughs> like this set, which it definitely can be. Sure, but the more we talked about it, and the more we were listening to uh, Lords of Limited's mm-hmm. fifty takes and fifty minutes on the set, it's kind of like on paper. The set seems fine. Yeah. And, and you were listening to what they were saying, and you were, like, nodding. Like, so tell me about your experience listening to that podcast. Sure. I had a lot of similar thoughts to Lords of Limited there, so that's, you know, I, I felt good about that. Like, the, the real disconnect was knowing, like, the theory behind what this set was more or less designed to do, right? It, it was a very, very fast set, and you needed to be on board as soon as possible, or you were getting beat. Interaction was paramount. Um, the color schemes were, you know, they, they evolved over time. It started out with black and migrated over to red X of some sort. Typically, white was very strong as well. And if you did red white, well, you're probably going to win a lot. Red uh, green also very Red good. green as well, yeah. Uh, Naya was, was what they mentioned. So I totally agree with that. So I knew all these things and I saw all this happening as well comes to play time and actual practice all that I just get slaughtered every single time everybody did something just a little bit better than me and it it was so exacerbated because the set was so fast you just didn't have time to stabilize and you just it just did not work out mm-hmm. I and I would always bemoan the shuffler I and I know yeah, so talk about that I know it's random I really do at the end of the day but it just feels better to complain about it because it's not me like I'm fine I'm like I'm, I'm number one I'm like good. yeah I, I'm good so <laughs> this is obviously something on magic arenas in but you know like I would always bemoan the shuffler because every single time like I had a beautiful curve. My average mana cost was like 2.3. I'd have all these like one mana, like, you know, like interaction cards. I'd have a hex gold slash or I'd have like, uh, you know, a nice quick like one drop, like the, the white toxic creature. Um, the chorus crawler. Chorus, yeah, chorus crawler. Two drops of plenty. Like I was like ready to go. And then like I might have like, you know, four, three drops. I might have like two, four drops and a five drop at most. I've got no tap lands or maybe one tap land at most. Without fail, my starting hand would be that tap land, um, lands of all different colors of everything that's in my hand. So let's just say I'm playing red, white. It would be like one white tap land, two planes, and three of my most expensive red cards. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, this feels bad. Come on now. So then you got a mulligan because you have to be aggressive here on this one. Shit. Now it's all spells and I can't play anything or there's one land and then, it's, again, my four and five drop are in my hand even though there's so few in there. 
well, shit, now i got to mold, mold a five. Well, now I'm not going to win. There's no chance. Like, you, you go into it kind of knowing. It's like, well, they're, they're just going to have too much gas going into this. So, And it wasn't even a battle of resources kind of to, to piggyback off Lords Limited there. It wasn't one of those things where you won by drawing more cards, getting into your deck quicker. It was who was most efficient with the cards that they had. So if you had cards that had menace or, you know, took more... Uh, rectangles for to interact with, right? <laughs> right? So, you know, if it menace was really good, um, interaction was great. Um, punch cards like like fight cards, stuff yeah. like that. Those were those were all great. And if you could get those efficiently and on the board real quick, and if you top deck well, you were golden. That yes, was, that was kind of long and short of it. I just never felt. Like I had any luck with it, and I always felt like I was on the defensive end and just trying to stabilize. Which this set is all about, just like just right. keep getting in there. Stabilizing isn't really an option. It's, that's not an option here. Yeah, we definitely talked about um, the the format is very fast. And I think mm-hmm. there are kind of two camps with this format. There are people who say it's awful, and there are sure. people who say. I know I didn't like it either, but let me try to convince you that it's not as bad as you think. Sure. And um, a lot of times, the people who say it's not as bad as you think, they want to tell you, well, you just got to learn how to play by the, the rules that this format has, which sure. is that early game, that interaction. Sure. But that has liabilities when it comes to how enjoyable it is, mm-hmm. because the fact that you have to look in aggressively mm-hmm. means it's very unforgiving yeah. of the random fluctuations that are just a normal part of the game. Mm -hmm. Like, in a normal format, you keep a a sketchy hand, maybe it works and maybe it doesn't. Here, you get what would normally be an okay Mm -hmm. hand in a different format. Doesn't work here, even though it's like, okay, I have three lands, four non-lands, I can play all of these cards in my hand, but I don't have anything to do before turn three. No. You must mulligan. Yeah. You really You're don't have a choice. Lose that right. And then you pitch that and you wind up with something where it's like, well, crap, now I don't even know if I'll be able to play any of these cards. Mm-hmm. Um, and that happened pretty frequently. Or likewise, you know, I would have hands where I have the three lands and the four non-lands and I just never draw another land mm-hmm. after that. Mm-hmm. And again, maybe in a different format that would be okay, but the format is so fast, it's so compressed down into the first four turns sure. that it's just really hard to recover from the little hiccups that are mm-hmm. just naturally a part of the game. Yeah. Like there, yeah, there is no stabilizing right. in this format really, with some you know specific exceptions sure, like some rares course. and stuff like of that. Course. You play your white suns at, mm-hmm. after you manage to draw it, maybe you come back. Um, but yeah, it was just very very fast. Mm-hmm. I think for me, part of it, speaking of the tempo, the speed of the format, um, it's been like a long string of very fast formats. Yes. I think Dominaria United was the least fast in recent memory. That's fair. But other than that, there's Brothers War, which was quite aggressive. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was Streets of New Capenna, which was very, very aggressive. Very. And in between, you know, that... That number of sets, we're talking like a year, basically. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is just very, very fast, very aggressive, very much like just play your stuff and get to it. And uh, for me personally, I just don't love that play style because so much of it feels like you just draw your opening hand and we both could just put our cards on the table and be like, well, who wins mm-hmm. based off of these cards? Yeah. And it doesn't feel like there's a lot of gameplay. Now, I think I might be in the minority on that, or at least there would be people who would argue because I heard a lot of people say that there's a lot of gameplay to Phyrexia all will be one. I don't know what you think about that. I don't, I, that was not my experience at all. It was just like, you just play your cards as fast as you can mm-hmm. and try to pummel your opponent to death. There's yes. no like clever plays as far as I could see. I, I think the only cleverness that you could possibly have out of this is just making sure that you are as efficient with your mana as possible but that's not that's not really like cleverness no, right that's just, as that's, much as you yeah can. that's just resource management there at that point no i i agree I, I don't think it was much more than is your hand a little bit better than your opponents and right. are, are your draws a little bit better than your opponents yeah and can you win by what turn five right something like that so no i i don't think um 
there was that much um, as much skill involved with this one here, especially whenever you're playing red, white, red, green. And of course, there's you know like proliferate and there's Vermeerden cards and cards like um, against all odds that would actually bounce stuff and bring stuff back was cute and all, but they really were kind of fringe plays, right? right? So they didn't play like all that much. They weren't like staple staples. Um, no, I thought this was just um, kind of big dumb, just play what you got as quick as you have and hope for the best, like hope the Scheffler treats you well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it kind of feels bad. An issue I have with it too is is just along the same lines. The different archetypes, sure, they're doing different things. Sure. Like, here's a toxic deck. Here's a corrupted deck. Here's the Fermiridin deck. Here's, but they all are just doing the same thing, which is just play your cheap threats, mm-hmm. play your cheap interaction, hope that you can get ahead of your opponent yeah. and stay there. And there was no real like, which is fine. Like, it's good to sure. have aggressive form or aggressive archetypes in the format. I think that's a good thing. But when that's all there is, mm-hmm. it feels pretty silly. Now, I know um, there's this blue deck floating around where it's more controlling, where you're sure. playing Jataxian Raptors and Eye of Malkators and a few other cards that sure. get underdrafted. And maybe, you know, that's the ticket forward. I did try to draft blue a few times, um, and maybe I just need to go back and try it again mm-hmm. and really have that in mind that that's what I'm trying to do when I land in that deck. Um, but, I mean, even so, I think it's really that deck is is trying to play a game that this format is just not about and maybe it's good if you can just get all the cards sure and it's all being passed to you um but even that i mean you're still trying to do the same thing you're still Mm -hmm. trying to play you know two drops as fast as possible and then you're winning not with like a a clever control scheme at the end you're bashing your opponent with taxian raptors for four in the air you know exactly so i don't know um yeah i'm just not it was not uh really juiced on this format i no. i i want to go to a format where i can draft something other than two drops mm-hmm. you know i i think it's good that these formats are keeping control decks honest and that sure. you, you can't get away with just dirtling and dicking around and never doing anything but it feels like if you even try to do that mm-hmm. you're gonna get punished if you try no, to do anything fair. other than stay on task and mm-hmm. play your aggressive drops nothing nothing doing pal yeah. sorry yeah and it feels like um, this deck, or this deck, this format, it seems a little more acceptable in the sense that we we knew it was going to be aggressive going sure. in. It's mm-hmm. like toxic poison is a part of it. Yeah. It felt aggressive. So it wasn't like a sucker punch like Streets of New Capenna sure. was, where it was like, ooh, we're going to a three color set. Yeah, we're gonna, let's explore. We're going to do some crazy yeah. stuff. And it was just like, nope, pick two colors, play mm-hmm. two drops, or you will lose. Mm-hmm. So it felt a little better in that way. And the same thing happened in Brothers War, where it was like, oh, big, expensive artifacts. Get mm-hmm. ready for the late game. It's like Rise of the Eldrazi Part yep. 2. Nope, don't play those cards. Mm-hmm. Get on board fast, or you will lose. And so I think part of the the pain here is just that another set where you have to just play two and three drops. One, two, one and two drops. Are especially, yeah. Like, three drops, sure. sure. But you need one and two drops, mm-hmm. or you will get fucked. Um so I think there's just some, for me, there's some fatigue setting in of like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm sick of drafting one and two drops, looking at my opening hand and being like, do I win or do I lose? Sure. Like, I wish it was like an auto battler that would just play itself and then I could move on with my day. Yeah. You know what? I, as you were talking on here, I was kind of thinking this actually does play well with what Wizards would really want, right? They want quicker games because then if you're, let's just say you take an hour and a half to do a slow, dirtly deck, you know, you might not have time to do another one versus if you have a very quick deck that takes 45 minutes, now you can get charged twice on the same amount of time. So that's actually in the best interest for Wizards there. I don't know if that's really what they're going for. Maybe. I, I really don't know. And then another thing too, this was a while ago, so I my memory may be a little fuzzy on this one, but I remember that there was a study about counters versus like countering a creature versus destroying a creature. And people felt so much worse about getting their creatures countered versus getting it onto the board and saying, yeah, it's here, and then all of a sudden it just instantly gets destroyed. Um, so maybe there is that aspect as well. So a lot more 
interaction and stuff like that to kind of give you that fighting chance and and be a little bit more aggressive with the with the format. So I maybe there's a you know maybe they are taking this information to heart and trying to figure out what to what to do with this stuff. So yeah. it's it's interesting for sure. Yeah, I'm not positive on what the rationale is because you may be totally right and that's part of it. I would also I wouldn't be surprised if they were just like they just had some internal directive about mm-hmm. people want to see more aggro and they're just pushing it to be a little more aggressive. Could be. Could Cuz the one thing I don't think you can argue is that the games are like moving faster. Oh yes. The curve Definitely. is being pushed down. There's better stuff at lower rarities mm-hmm. and lower costs, especially. Yes. Um, which I don't know. There's a lot of things that could go into that. Cause I I think I feel this way too. I don't like it when there are cards in a set that don't do anything, right? Yeah. I don't think that feels good for anybody. Yeah. But what is maybe what that does as a downstream consequence is that okay now you have these one drops that before were unplayable and now they're really really good. They have a paragraph of text, right? Yeah. And okay, so now you got to be using the one drops, uh-huh. and so it just pushes everything to be that much more aggressive. Sure. I don't know. I think there's a better balance to be found. I think so. We've we played formats like I think of. I mean, I mentioned this recently. Uh, Kamigawa oh, and yeah. Dynasty was a great set. I thought. And had plenty of powerful mm-hmm. early drops and, and early stuff, but had synergies and had all these kind of mm-hmm. wild different decks. And you would go like you would, I would play my like really low cost uh, value saga deck mm-hmm. and go against a red blue synergy artifact deck and mm-hmm. get my ass handed to yep. me. And you know I like that both things are possible. Absolutely. And when you go against a good synergy deck, you're going to get the floor mm-hmm. wiped with you. Um, that's all I want. I, I want yeah. I want to feel like I'm rewarded for exploring and doing mm-hmm. other stuff, and in these I just feel there's no delight for me in these formats. There's nowhere sure. to go. It's just like I'm drafting the red white deck, so I take the cheap red and white cards and mm-hmm. I play them. Yeah, and that's the end of the story. And, and then I play until I get to a level where I'm just constantly getting beat by these same red white decks that are just better played right. by somebody else, and I'm just beating my head against the wall while I go. 0-3, 0-3, 1-3, 0-3, 0-3. Um, and yeah, it just, it just feels bad. Like, I don't want to play after a while. And I always think it's so funny whenever I get the random, oh, did you have fun this game? I've never said yes. Ne- even when I win, I, I never say yes. I'm like, no, I'm a salty old man. I hate this game, but I play it anyway. <laughs> Take my money, whatever. <laughs> I think that's a great note too in today's conversation yeah. as we uh, maybe go in and try to lose some work. That, that sounds good. Let's let's lose away. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining me, Seth. Pleasure to be here. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.